thanks for being here. I'm impressed your, uh, your people showing up. The Android Fireside chat was uh, kind of scaring me that uh, everyone would just avoid this session. Um, but uh, no, it's great to have you here. Uh, and uh, this talk is about art. Um, so there's a, a part of uh, this talk, which was supposed to be on uh, garbage collection, and that my colleague David was uh, planning on, on, on giving. But we're not going to rehash the same thing. So I'll put long pauses, awkward ones, I hope, um, during the talk, so I can fit the 40 minutes. Um, so bear with me. Uh, so, given we're celebrating 10 years of Android, um, David and I thought it would be a good idea to think about what we've done the last 10 years and how the Android runtime, which is the thing uh, we worked on uh, for a couple of years now, um, evolved. So here we are. So some of you went to the chat talk, so I guess you already know what the what an Android runtime is in the Android stack. Uh, but in case you don't, it's that little layer, that yellow one here, uh, between the Android framework, like the Android operating system, and the actual underlying kernel. Um, the runtime uh, runs both the Android framework and all of the apps. So like everything written in Java, that's what we execute. Um, and so being so core in the platform, it becomes responsible for a ton of things. Uh, like the, ex the user experience would be very, could be very bad uh, if the Android runtime was not efficient. And you saw that this morning with how the GC was sort of kind of poor in the Dalvik days. So in this talk, I'll show you over time how runtime versions um, that, that like the, all the iterations we've made over the past uh, they've oscillated between, okay, what do we need to improve for this year? Um, and like I said, it, uh, our, the Android runtime is responsible for a bunch of things. Uh, and raw performance is, is one clear one, like how, how fast do we execute Java code. But clearly, it's also responsible for jank, right? Like the 16 milliseconds window, if the runtime is not able to execute the Java code of, that app, of the app, well, then we'll miss the frame and then produce a lot of jank. Application startup, there's a lot of Java code that needs to be executed during application startup. Again, if the runtime is slow, startup will be slow. Boot times, the Android OS is written in Java, so a lot of code, again, executes during boot. Uh, battery, if we're slow, we're going to tank your battery. And uh, install time uh, is also something we care about because we are, when we get an APK, the platform will optimize it and that could take a long time depending on uh, how we implement it. And uh, we don't want that long time to happen because we want you to use the app right away. And the other two, which is like memory uh, related, is like disk space. It's like how much space is the runtime taking for its own optimizations. And then RAM. Um, so Java being Java, there's allocation uh, that the runtime needs to handle. Uh, and if it doesn't do it well, then it can take a lot of RAM. So this, essentially, there's been three incarnations of the Android runtime. The first one was Dalvik. It was the first implementation that shipped with Android. And Dalvik's, Dalvik's purpose, or Dalvik's main focus, was how do we save RAM? And the reason being, back in the days, like 10 years ago, the RAM we had on the phones we were shipping was like even less than 200 megabytes. And that was very little if you want to execute the whole event, the Android stack. So everything Dalvik was doing was about, OK, how do we save on RAM? So it could not generate any code. JIT or IoT um, is how we generate code. Um, it could just interpret the DEX code, the DEX code being the thing that gets sent to, the, uh, to Android for execution of your app. Eventually, it got a just-in-time compiler so that we could generate native code of the DEX code. But again, it was very limited to what it could do because RAM was the main focus. And its GC was tailored for 
hey, apps should not allocate objects. If you've been to the talk this morning, things have changed. But back in the days, the recommendation was like, please avoid allocations. And this worked well for, I think, five years uh, till KitKat. Um, but there was like a point where like, David could not keep up. Phones were getting bigger. Uh, phone, phones were getting uh, more performant, more RAM. Like the 2000, uh, that was 2013, 14. I think it was one gig, two gigs of RAM. Um, and uh, apps were also getting bigger. So initially, apps were supposed to be like this small layer between the uh, UI and the framework, but apps become started doing a lot of more and more things. So that 16 millisecond window I talked for rendering a frame, well, more things started to be executed there. So we had to do something about it. And the answer happened in Lollipop with Art, uh, which introduced ahead of time compilation. So no more interpre interpretation, or very, very, very little. And most of the things were ahead of time compiled, meaning we were executing native code for your app. And that is like, probably 20x faster than interpretation. We also introduced like a state of the art um, GC, what you find in regular runtimes of being precise. That means we're not gonna be confused by an integer that looks like, a, like an object. But also generations, so that the GC pauses we need to do uh, in the UI thread will be very short. So pauses don't actually end up uh, cre creating jank. The third incarnation is like an evolution of art. Uh, it happened in two releases, like Android Nougat and Android Oreo. In Android Nougat, we introduced profile-guided compilation. I'll talk about this later, uh, or explain a bit later what it is. Uh, but it, it drastically helped on scaling arts ahead of time technology uh, to, to be more optimized for the, pl for the, for the platform. S the profile guided compilation has underneath the way it works is like it's a hybrid just in time, ahead of time compiler. So we're trying to use the best of both worlds uh, to optimize the platform. And in O, after we've done all of some optimizations in N, in O, we focused on the garbage collector and implemented a brand new one, which makes the pause even shorter uh, on, the, on the UI thread. We call this concurrent GC. Um, now the, the, all the GC, happening hap the GC happens on a different thread, so it's not affecting the execution of the app. All right. So before I dive in into our details, I wanted to show this to you, like the state of Android distribution today. And in case you're still optimizing for Dalvik, or if you need to care about Dalvik and this just annoying GC4 alloc, if you've been at Chat Stock, you know what I'm talking about. Well, there's still this 10% uh, here, right? 10, 10 KitKat, Jellybean, and a bit of a few other. So around 10% of devices are still running KitKat. So my recommendation is like, it still matters. 10% is probably like 200 million users. Um, it's quite a big number. So it still matters. But give it a couple of years, and hopefully in two years, that will be gone, and that will be part of this museum. All right. So things art uh, matters for. I've put eight boxes. Um, they look nice, and we do matter a lot for this. Like, if we do get it wrong, things will go bad on your device. Raw performance, I talked about. Um, that's Java execution. Jank, application startup, battery, disk space, RAM, boot times, install times. I'm just repeating myself, but this is really important, right? This is the thing that makes your user experience kind of OK so that you can enjoy um, the apps. So I'm going to go over the releases I talked about, what, what uh, mo the different incarnations of the Android runtime, um, to show what it brings to the, so what, what uh, 
makes art today. Because art uh, has a lot, of, like, I, like I said, has a lot of evolutions. And, but we also, we also took things from Dalvik, like good things from Dalvik. Uh, I'm listing the major ones here because the list would be too long. Um, and obviously the major thing that Dalvik, the Dalvik architecture brought was RAM savings. And for that, Dalvik introduced, or Dalvik or the Android platform actually introduced the Zygote, um, which is the parent process that creates all of the other processes. So because it's the parent process, you have the option of that parent process starting up or allocating a lot of memory for, uh, that apps can use. And then that memory can be shared with the other apps. And that's super important. That means that every app now doesn't need to allocate this memory that it would need otherwise to actually execute uh, the, in, in art. Today, that's around like a, uh, a couple of dozens of megabytes that we save per app and that the Saigo just allocates and share with the, uh, with the other apps. Then Lollipop, that was the major shift when we introduced ahead of time compilation. Uh, ahead of time compilation happens with what we call an SSA compiler, um, static signal assignment compiler. Um, that's a compiler buzzword. Um, that is like state of the art compiler that does a lot of optimizations and makes your code up to 20x faster. So we introduced that ahead of time compiler that helped a lot on reducing jank because now the code was compiled, not needing to be interpreted and very fast. Reducing application startup, same argument, but also saving battery. Like now the execution being 20x faster, you can imagine that, well, it's not the point of saving 20x times on your battery, but things get faster and, and we don't need to execute a lot on the CPU anymore. We also save on boot times. The whole Android OS is ahead of time compiled and doesn't need to be interpreted at boot. So here we go. Things go faster at boot. We also introduced the, uh, a new GC, generational GC, which reduced the pauses and removed the need for GC for alloc in Davik. Then the third incarnation, Nuga and Oreo. I mentioned how there we introduced profile gated compilation, and that thing helps. It's kind of the mother of all the optimizations today that we do. It's like it helps a, a lot of these metrics. It helps on uh, it helps on jank, like less code gets compiled. The things that we care about gets optimized, so the UI thread needs to to uh, run less code. It helps on application startup. Because we can profile the application, we're able to know what matters at startup so that we, when we recompile the app, we recompile it with optimizations that optimize startup. It helps on battery. Again, we're saving on the amount of, of, of things we're interpreting. It helps on disk space because instead of compiling the entire app, which was, which was, was what Lollipop was doing, now we're only compiling the hot parts of an app. That's probably like 10 to 20% of the DEX code. So 80% just doesn't get compiled. And that's a lot of savings. Saves on RAM. Having a concurrent GC means we can do a lot more uh, defragmentation of the heaps of every app. So we save that on the fragmentation that we had in the previous GC. Profile gate compilation also helped a lot on boot times. Remember the optimizing apps dialog? Well, that's the reason we're able to remove it. Now, we didn't need to AOT compile at boot all of the apps to make sure the device was reasonable in performance. We were, we, we were able to just, OK, we take an OTA. We're going to JIT all the apps so we don't need to compile at boot. We're going to JIT when the user wants it. And then eventually, we're going to do profile gated compilation of the apps when the user is not using its phone. And then finally, it helped on install times, because instead of waiting for the compiler to compile the entire app when you install, now we didn't compile it at all. 
we just rely on the JIT the first time the app was being used. And lastly, I wanted to mention Pi because the, the time we developed Pi was kind of at the same time of Android Go. Uh, and Android Go is a great effort in the Android platform. Uh, and for that, we, the work we did was mostly to save on disk space and RAM, because Android Go is like 512 to a gigabit of memory uh, and 4 or 8 gigs of, of disk space. So most of our efforts were focused on improving RAM and also improving uh, disk space. So in that release, we introduced Compact Dex, which is like a, a compact version of the Dex format, uh, which saves on RAM because the, 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 the less you need to put into the memory of the Dex code, uh, the more you're saving, obviously. Also, when the uh, APK has uncompressed Dex in, uh, uh, stored, uh, we will not uncompress it on disk. So before we, before we used to uncompress it to do optimizations on the DEX file, which we cannot do in the APK because the APK is signed. So we un we, before PI, we uncompress it, do some optimizations, and rely on them on the first few iterations before we do profile gate compilation. Now we give the option of, to the uh, developer if the developer wants to save on disk space, then put the DEX file uncompressed in DPK, which means we're not going to uncompress it on device. So we'll have just one version of the DEX code and not a compressed version in DPK and an uncompressed one on disk. All right, that was a lot of optimizations. I wanted to focus on uh, one, which is raw execution performance. Because what you saw this morning was pretty cool with 18x, but this is even cooler. So obviously, the faster Art runs, uh, the more we're saving on battery on application startup and make the UI smooth. So it really matters all the optimizations we do. And over the releases, we have kept on improving the performance by looking at actual applications. In this case, it's the Google Sheets. And every release we worked on, like, OK, how do we improve the Google Sheets app? And the Google Sheets app, or the Google Sheets team, helped us build benchmarks that show like, how long it takes to do uh, sheets manipulation. Here, higher is better. Blue is Dalvik. And that's a score of 1. So we make it relative to Dalvik, the performance. Red is Lollipop. So that's when we introduced Art. And then yellow is today. And you can see that we went from around like a 4x improvement when we moved to Art in Lollipop to like an average of 10x today, and even to 26x on one benchmark. So we're pretty happy with those numbers. But we, we just didn't look just at sheets. Uh, we tried to also look at what, what, happens to, what happened to other apps. So a couple of years ago, we also, we also worked with the Chrome team and the YouTube team to look at what they think we should optimize. And there again, like after the fact, even though we were not focused on optimizing those benchmarks, we saw that we had this 4 to 6x improvements um, with what we've done. So there's two, ex two examples. There's the Octan benchmarks. That's the JavaScript benchmark suite that we ported for our purposes. Uh, that's Delta Blue and Richards. And it's, again, 2 to 4x, 3.5x uh, uh, for those benchmarks, up to 6x uh, to, uh, in Pi. And then ExoPlayer, that's the uh, audio and, and video processor uh, driving the YouTube app on Android. Well, again, around 2x for uh, the introduction of art, and then 4x uh, today in Pi. And while I, while I have your attention on performance, I have a shameless call to do. We're always super interested in improving code that you think is important. So if on your side, you'd like us to show off how we improve performance of your app, uh, please come talk to us. There's the office hours from 1 to 6 uh, this afternoon. 
uh, and we would be really interested in knowing what you think we should care about for performance. And then we can show that off here. All right. So the question then is, like, how did we get this level of improvements? I mentioned how Art now has a modern compiler implementation. I call that SSA. Um, and thanks to that modern like SSA uh, compilation, there's a bunch of optimizations we're able to do now. If you know compiler, well, you, things that could look familiar, inlining, uh, dead code elimination. I'm not going to go over all of them, lucky you. Um, but instead, I'll focus on an example that shows how those optimizations matter, especially for a language like Kotlin that puts a lot more abstractions uh, to help the productivity of the user, but makes it more challenging for the runtime to optimize. All right, so let's take this simple method. Very simple. It takes a function that takes one argument and then returns the length. When we run that to, through our Dexer, R8, or awesome new Dexter. Um, here's the code you you get. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, even if you're fam not familiar with Dex code, like you're creating a string, um, then Kotlin having non-nullable types, it'll make sure that the string the string is not null when you get it passed to the function. So it adds this helper method. Hey, check that this parameter is not null. Then invoke virtual of the length method on the argument and return that. Kotlin comes with the built-in library. So that's where you can find implementations of those helper methods. And for that case, it's only like a simple method that will just, OK, is the argument null? Yes. Then I will throw, calling another helper. Or I will just return and return back to the method. So method calls are pretty expensive. So the first thing that Art will do is that it'll try to inline that very small method within the caller. Here, the compiler has inlined it at the place it's being called. Uh, just for simplicity reasons, this looks like Dex code. It's actually the intermediate format of the compiler, but I'm not going to show that to you. Um, so. Compile code is being inlined, which helps on performance. But there's more we can do. Because the compiler sees, oh, wait, that throw parameter is null exception call. It actually always throws. So there's a few things I can do with that information. First one is called code layout where we're trying to put together like the regular flow of the method. So things that rarely happen, we put that at the very end of the method. So it doesn't affect the flow of the execution. Nifty trick, right? We just, return, we just switch the, the comparison from, hey, are you not zero to are you zero? And then we jump to the end of the method, which is like, hey, throw an exception. So the expensive jump is out of the picture now. The second optimization is that we're going to move things that, hey, the regular flow doesn't care about. In this case, let me just go back, if I can. Yeah. In this case, the construction of the string that is being passed to the helper was the first thing you execute in the method. But you only need that if you end up calling the helper. So we move that construction of that string, that string right before the helper, meaning we don't need to execute it anymore. So in the end, we started from a method that was like creating a string, calling a helper, then doing its thing, which is returning the length, to a method that just like check if it's null. If it is, jump do an expressive jump somewhere. If it's not, just continue the flow and, and, and return the length of the method, the length of the string, sorry. 
All right. So that was raw performance. I have two other things to talk about. Actually, just one, because I have to talk about application startup and garbage collection. But I'm not going to redo the garbage collection side. Chet and Romain did a great job this morning. So with application startup, um, it's, a, it's been a major fo focus since we in introduced profile gated compilation. And that happened in Nuga. Profile gated compilation is when, when the app is being installed, we compile it in a very quick way. Like we're not going to generate, um, um, we're not going to do like a full AOT compilation. We're going to do very little optimizations that do not affect install time. So we're optimizing install time. So the app is being installed, then you run it. The app is being executed. Initially, it gets executed with interpretation, and then method gets hot, and then JIT kicks in and compiles those hot methods. The JIT knows what those hot methods are. So we are going to dump to a profile file those hot methods. So that when your device is idle, the user is not using it, it's charging, 100% charge, then we have this, what we call, profile guided daemon that will just like, okay, let me walk over all the profiles and recompile the app and compile them, compile only the things that matter based on that profile. And you have like this virtuous loop where the next time you run the app, that's, we're going to use that optimized version of the compile code and then run it with what got AOT'd. Maybe some methods got missed, so we'll interpret them, they'll get hot, we'll JIT them, we'll update the profile, and then again, the daemon kicks in, say, oh, the profile got updated, let me recompile the app. So there's this virtuous loop of like, trying to be better and better uh, over time. And why is that helping an application startup? Well, that's because the, the things we do when we compile the app based on a profile are really optimized towards this. We are only going to comp we're, sorry, we're going to compile startup methods. So now no need to interpret them. Things that get executed at startup will get compiled. We're going to lay out the DEX and the compile code. So things that execute at startup will be next to each other. So now we don't need to jump over the entire DEX file to actually get access to the method. And that's very important. Like I said, apps got bigger. So if you need to bring up the entire DEX file just for startup, that's a lot of time waiting on I.O. So we're trying to reduce that by putting everything on startup at the beginning and then the rest at the end. Profile gate compilation also generates an application image. Other runtimes, we'll call this a snapshot. It's a representation of Java classes that we put in that image. It's a file. And that avoids us to actually load the classes at runtime again. So there's this, there's this pre-formatted number of classes with a class loader. And when we start up, we just take the class loader. All the classes are already populated. And we're done. We don't need to do ca code, uh, class loading anymore. We're also going to try to pre-initialize classes. So Java has this step of like, oh, classes need to be initialized before they need to be executed. So what we do during profile guided compilation is that we're going to pre-initialize anything we can to avoid that being executed when we start the app. And then finally, I said, we're not going to compile code that doesn't get executed. That helps a lot because then your old file is very small. Your, sorry, your compile file uh, is very small. So there's not a lot you need to bring up in memory to actually execute. What do we gain from all those um, optimizations? Where there can be, we always gain doing those optimizations. But depending on the app, they can be under, at the 10% or 30%. And that's usually around how many 
Java code do you have when you start your app? Typically, Camera has a lot of native code. So that's where it's on the low end of like 10% improvement. But in this example, you see docs and maps, which are very Java heavy, go from around 30% of, of app startup improvement. And this is numbers that we got from the Maps team, uh, who got that from actual users, so actual data that comes from the field. And when this, the Maps team saw that graph, they were like, what is going on? How come at install, things are around like a one second of app startup, to over time, things get faster? How, how does that happen? And every time they update the app, it's the same trend. It starts pretty high, and then goes low. And the answer is profile gated compilation. Here you're clearly seeing that over time, things get better. Today, in Pi, what we've talked about at I.O. last year is the introduction of profiles in the cloud. And that's how we're making the entire ecosystem send us profiles, like actual execution profiles of users, so that we can send those profiles to new users of app. So they don't get this starts at one second, ends up at 750 milliseconds. They get the 750 milliseconds right away because they get the profile at the point they install. Garbage collection, like I said, I'm not going over them, over it. Um, maybe I can just put back a number that we're all very proud of. Here we are. Ah, that's the last. Um, so this is resuming what Chet talked about this morning. It's all the technology we've used uh, over time uh, for building a, a GC. Uh, so uh, you see in KitKat, we had this what we call concurrent mark sweep. Um, there was one part of the, the GC that was concurrent. And that uh, uh, stayed for up until Nougat. In Oreo, that's when we introduced the uh, concurrent collector. Um, allocation in KitKat, it was the main bottleneck, uh, and it was single-threaded, so it needed to lock to actually allocate something. Uh, the intro the intro introduction of a new GC in Lollipop meant that we could allocate within the thread and not need to lock. So that improved performance of allocation. Um, the, uh, the, when you allocate objects that are short-lived, right? And that's the motto of, of, um, of Java. It's like, feel free to allocate objects. The one that are short-lived will be removed by the GC very quickly. But in KitKat, in Davic days, that was not the case. It was, it, you, had, you pay a very high cost um, by allocating temporary objects. Lollipop is when we introduced a new GC, and the, you didn't pay that cost uh, at all. Like, allocating short-lived objects was, we had generations, so things were removed pretty quickly. There's an asterisk for Oreo, because when we introduced concurrent collector, um, we s removed the generations out of the, of the collector. Um, we're fixing that today. Uh, it, it's in EOSP, the improvement of the GC with generations. So hopefully, we'll be there in the device soon. And then fragmentation. Fragmentation is a big problem uh, in Android, because if you're not able to allocate memory, your app will be killed. So doing compaction of the memory so that things are not fragmented is super important. KitKat did a bit, but very little. In Lollipop of a Marshmallow, we were doing it when the app was going background. So eventually, we're reclaiming the memory. But Oreo is when we made it like, it's really important that we compact all the time so that the memory is there available all the time. And then the number I was looking for. 
allocation speed, we went from a very low number in Davik to an 18x improvement in Oreo and Pi. And here's, here's the, the, reasons we, uh, the reasons it got improved. Um, Lollipop added a custom allocator that did not need to lock. Uh, then in Marshmallow, we had fewer um, CAS operations, that uh, atomic operations, uh, that, that have a cost, but we were able to remove a bit of them. Then all of, that, all of that implementation of the allocation path was moved to assembly code in Nuga, uh, which made things even faster. And then finally, in Android Oreo, we, we implemented bump pointer uh, allocation, which meant the only thing you do when you allocate is increment a, po uh, increment a pointer. All right, with that, this is the recommendation that Chet has and that comes from us. So I'll give the same. Creating garbage is okay today. You can use a tab and allocate objects you need. GC is still overhead, uh, so be mindful that if you allocate a lot of objects, then GC will need to run. But it's less, less a problem uh, since Dalvik. And with that, thank you. <laughs>